are still the bread and we were hungry, we were eating just about anything and um, and people were getting, there was no, no crematorium in, in that camp, but people were getting killed every single day. They, for any little reason, they would be, uh, they would take them off on the arena. The, the, the men's name, the uh, Gestapo's name that watched over us, that was the main guy, his name was Ned, and he was mean, he was so mean, he was horrible. But then one day, it was uh, getting pretty late now, that it's okay, it's still okay, okay, <laughs> because I get carried away, you know. So they, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, this Gestapo had his own little lackeys with him, and uh, then um, they, they took a, a transport with to go by young boys or young men uh, to send to the ghetto. After the, after the ghetto was liquidated, they formed a little ghetto of one street, which was also turned into a camp, but it was more of an inner city. And so uh, I found out that my brother-in-law had survived the, uh, the liquidation of the ghetto. Although my sister had disappeared and nobody knew what happened to her and her children. And so uh, there was this young man that came over to me and he says, you know, I was assigned to go to the ghetto. And um, the people in the ghetto had a little more uh, food. They were able to get a little more food than us in the camp. And so uh, he said, if you write me, a, write a note or write a letter to your brother-in-law, I will uh, show it to him and he will, hopefully he will send you some food. So uh, I said, okay, and I took that, I told Bella about that note and uh, the letter about what the boy said. So she wrote a little tiny, she, she found a piece of paper and a pencil and she wrote, please help, that's all. So I showed him that paper and he said, well, he's not going to know who that is and you can write. Believe me, he said, I know that I have a, a perfect hiding place. Nobody's going to find your letter. Pro I promise. So I went ahead and I rewrote the letter and I wrote down a whole long, a childish letter that this pen is, this this writing is not written with ink, it is written with blood. And people are being killed every single day. People are dying from hunger. And I really told whatever, everything was going on. And I gave him the letter. And as soon as I saw him get up on the truck with my letter, I knew that I shouldn't have done it. And, uh, and I was right, I shouldn't have done it. It was stupid of me. Uh, I should have just given him Bella's because she was a smart girl and she knew better. And so uh, for three, they were gone for three days. And the whole three days, my heart was pounding and I, I was shivering from fright. And then finally when they came back, I knew that something was wrong. They lined us up immediately in a circle this time. They lined us all up in a circle. And they started questioning only me. Nobody else except me. Pulled me out from the from line. And then I started following me and I pushed her back. No, go back. I wrote the letter. Go back. And she wouldn't listen. She kept on she's she wasn't back on me. I almost did her. <coughs> And finally, uh, I started to cry immediately. And I was crying, loud, loud crying. And this man said to me, in my crying, he said to me, uh, do you see blood here? And I started crying again, screaming, crying, because I couldn't lie. I was not able to lie to say, no, I don't see blood. So I continued to cry louder. He said, if you don't stop crying, you see that man with the rifle that was here crying? In? He's going to shoot you if you don't stop crying. But I couldn't help it. But apparently, 
he got tired of my screaming and crying, and he said, it sounded to me like to, you will be shot tomorrow. I, I didn't, I, that's what, that was my understanding, and then I thought the same thing. And as we, we were chased into the barracks, and uh, I waited for three days again to be taken out and being shot. And meantime, all the girls were very angry at me because I put them in jeopardy. How I did it, I don't know, but I, I, apparently I did. And, uh, and after three days, it was Sunday. We had, we had one day free. So Sunday, I walked out onto the, uh, onto the, uh, um, the, the camp. There was the, the camp, it was uh, an open field in the camp. And uh, I was walking around with my head turned. I had not taken, by then I had not taken our clothes off uh, or anything. Without whatever we had on, we were wearing. And we were just waiting to be taken out to be uh, outside of the, uh, of the camp was a little field where they were taking all the people out to ship them and they were buried right there. And so we were waiting to be uh, shot and buried. And then I went, I saw this boy, who, his sister was working for men in his office. And I, uh, he, he stopped me and he put his finger to my chin and he said, what's wrong? Why, what is going on? Why are you so sad? I said, well, uh, could you please tell me when they are going to take me out to the shop? And he said, he decided to, he smiled, he said, uh, why do you think you're going to be shot? Well, I heard Ned was saying that tomorrow we were going to be shot, or tomorrow went and gone. And so he said, okay, you're not going to be shot. What he said is, that since you are the first women, we, are, we will tolerate you. So I will tolerate you. So uh, then after that, I ran into Bella and I told her what had happened. And she was, so after that, we started breathing easier. And um, typhoid fever was rampant in vision. And uh, I had typhoid fever. And then uh, Bella, and after me, typhoid fever, although she's had typhoid fever in the ghetto, but it was a different typhoid. And the, uh, but the, the hunger was so unbearable, Bella found a friend that was uh, also with privileges, and he was, of course, the last few weeks of our stay, he was helping us with uh, some, uh, some bread or whatever that he was able to give us. And then after, uh, and this was in 44, beginning of 44, we were shipped out to Auschwitz. And Auschwitz was, as all of you heard about Auschwitz, with a death camp, with the crematoriums, where we heard, where we, uh, we could smell the smoke as soon as the cattle train arrived into the camp. The, it was an acrid smell, like flesh burning. And it was not like, like when you boil a steak or something. It was a different, it was a, a sickly smell. And um, so that's where we knew already, we already knew the rumors about Auschwitz and the crematoriums. So we expected something. But still, you know, you want to think that some, some miracle is going to happen. And then, of course, uh, the ones that were totally emaciated went to one side and the others to the right. So Bella and I were lucky enough to go to the uh, side where the living were. And we were given uh, numbers. I had a number, but uh, being a nurse, I uh, worked the time in a doctor's office.